I'd like to begin tonight's event um, in the name of God, the most gracious, the most merciful. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, brothers and sisters. Welcome to Islamic Information and Dawah Center's monthly lecture series entitled Islam and Other Religions. Tonight's topic is, did Jesus prophecy the coming of the Holy Spirit or another prophet? For more information about further events or past events, feel free to go to www.islaminfo.com. My name is Sasha Purse, and it is a pleasure and an honor to be your MC for the night. With that out of the way, how is everybody tonight? You guys, everybody awake? Let's try this one more time. How is everybody tonight? All right, we're, get, we're getting some feedback, okay, all right. Um, I would like to extend everybody a warm welcome for coming out. And for everybody tuning, tuning in online, thank you for tuning in. Um, I ask everybody, please, listen to tonight's speakers. Sincerely, with an unbiased mind, open ears, and heart, and give them their due time. Please save any questions or remarks for the question and answer session that will follow later on, and I will briefly go over how the, n the night will unfold. Um, questions, they will be written down. Put your hand up. We have the same ushers running around. Raise your hand, and we'll have, if you have a question, we'll, ha we'll have uh, some volunteers handing out pens and paper. Feel free to write them down. I also ask, please, this is very important, um, more so for myself when I'm trying to decipher who the question is for, um, please put who the question is for, so put the title, whether it's Stephen or Dr. Shabir, please put that at the top, or if it's for both, please um, uh, write down that accordingly. One more thing regarding the questions, I also ask, uh, for res out of due respect for both of our speakers, they've prepared for the topic for tonight, so please keep the questions or remarks for tonight's event and keep them related, please. Um, now for a quick rundown of tonight's event, each speaker will begin with an opening 15 minutes, 10, 15 minute stage, we changed that last minute. Um, so 15 minute, sta 15 minute opening statements followed by a, a response for each speaker, and that will be 10 minutes each. And then they will have a further response to the response that'll last a five minutes. And following that, we will have the question and answer session and we will take a brief prayer, uh, prayer break for our Isha prayer. That'll be around 7.30. And then we will, we will f if there's still questions, we will, hold, we will um, answer those after the prayer. And then we will have closing statements. And then we would invite everybody downstairs for some refreshments, some social time, and get to know each other as a community. <clears throat> a little bit about both of our speakers. We have, to my left, Stephen Atkins who is a graduate from Humber College of Applied Arts and Technology with a diploma in business management, and he's currently pursuing undergraduate stu student studies at Prairie Bible College, Toronto Baptist Seminary, and Tyndale College and Seminary. No, pursued. Ah, he's Actually. pursued them, you have. Yeah. Ah, my apologies, I misread, I misread that. Ah, so you currently, you've pursued them, so you've attained. No. Ah, uh, okay, my apologies. I'm an undergraduate. Uh, so he has undergraduate studies and currently pursuing them? No. Uh, okay. Uh, my apologies, humblest apologies. And he lays evangelism in both Toronto and on social media. Um, he attends mus Muslim Christian dialogues at Paradise Forever, and he periodically teaches adult Sunday school at his home church. And to his left, we have Dr. Shabir Ali, who has a PhD in Quranic interpretations and a master's in comparative religions. He's been blessed to travel many countries talking about his passion, Islam, God, and, care, and comparative religion. He appears as a resident scholar weekly on the TV show, Let the Quran Speak, for any past and future episodes. Feel free to go to www.quranspeaks.com. Please give a warm welcome to both of our guests. We've decided earlier that, if I'm not mistaken, Stephen will go first. And um, 
I would like to, let me just move the mic over, we'll begin with the opening statement, starting with Steve. Okay, thank you. I'll be blessed with technology. Um, first of all, I'd like to uh, thank Shabir and the uh, folks at the Islamic Information and Dawah Center for hosting events like this. I think it's, uh, you know, a good thing when Christians and Muslims can come together and discuss their differences in a uh, in a friendly way. And uh, so, thank you, Shabir, for you know uh, inviting me to come and uh, share my position on who, uh, what Jesus prophesied on the Holy Spirit, or did another prophet. Uh, or was it another prophet? Uh, I also would like to just, if I may, uh, ask the uh, the one and true Triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, to enable me to speak the truth with boldness and clarity, and without error, and that uh, above all, that I may be bring glory to the Lord Jesus Christ. It's important that you know we all have um, presuppositions. Both Muslims and Christians insist that God has spoken through natural revelation and through the scriptures. Of course, for the Christians, it is the, it is the Bible, and for Muslims, it is the Quran. Both Muslims and Christians should reject uh, the naturalistic worldview. Both of us, again, insist that God has spoken. And, you know, we're not atheists here. The other thing, too, is, um, is that both of us believe or want, uh, excuse me, both of us uh, insist that we should allow each other's scriptures to speak for themselves. Shabir uh, has said on several occasions that, let, or asked, let the Quran speak. And for me, this evening, I want to say let John speak for himself because the topic of, of course, tonight's discussion is did Jesus prophesy the coming of the Holy Spirit or another prophet? And um, most of my references are going to be in the Gospel of John chapters 14, 15, and 16. Well, why, look at, why do we go to John? Well, first of all, we need to look at John as being an eyewitness. In John chapter 20 and verse 24, uh, John says about himself, this is the, uh, this is the disciple uh, is bearing, uh, the, bearing these things. He is, and these things, or I'm sorry, that uh, these things are written that you might believe and that believing you might have uh, life in uh, uh, his name. Also, we understand that John was an eyewitness in uh, the 21st chapter of John, he says that uh, he was an eyewitness to these events. So we're going to let John speak for himself because he is an eyewitness. When we look at the Bible, we have to ask ourselves basically two questions. And I teach this to uh, anyone whom I'm teaching about how to read the Bible, how to interpret the Bible. Two main rules, just two. Basically, um, to uh, what was the writer's intent? What was the writer intending to convey? And what would the original hearers have understood? And so uh, we, want to, we want to keep these two things in mind. And what was the purpose of the, uh, of the gospel? You want to keep that in mind as well. Well, the, uh, this gospel was not... In, uh, was not necessarily written to believers, to, but to unbelievers, because it says that these things are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and by believing you may have life in his name. So when we look at John, it's not only a hi historical, but it's didactic. And we're going to look at some of these didactic passages uh, this evening. When we look at the Gospel of John, 
it does emphasize, of course, the person work of, of Christ, but it also emphasizes uh, much about the Holy Spirit. And we, we see the ministry of the Holy Spirit, uh, even in, beginning in the very first chapter, in chapter 1, verse 33, we see the Spirit descending like a dove. Uh, we see it as Jesus who baptizes a person in the Holy Spirit. Uh, the Holy Spirit gives life in John chapter 3, verse 6, and 633. The Spirit is, is, uh, is, uh, is sovereign, and the Spirit is also uh, compared to living water. To focus in a little bit more, uh, the, the, uh, we look at the, the word, uh, there are five references to the Holy Spirit or uh, the paraclete in John, uh, in John 14, uh, 15 and 16, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, John uh, 14 verse 36, John 15 verse 36, and John 16 verses 7 through 11. And uh, now if we look at the word, the word of the paraclete, well that is, uh, I, when you look into the commentaries and you get all sorts of things, but basically it is a forensic, or has a, le uh, a forensic mean, meaning and is, a le uh, and is used in a, in a, as a lawyer maybe uh, uh, advocating on another, spur, uh, another, one, another person's behalf. It's also interesting that uh, when we look at the Old English in the King James Version, the word is used as comforter. And uh, in, he in Hebrew, uh, the word is nakam. And I'm not too sure how to say it in uh, Arabic. Maybe I better not, but it is, it, it's, uh, is it nakam? Close enough, nakam for, for But it is uh, one who comes along to counsel or give succor or to give aid. And, and, and so if we look at the immediate, con but, but let's look at further on. It, when we look at John 4, uh, or in John uh, chapter 13 through 17, you look at, this is Jesus, so as we might say, his last will and testimony. It's the last words that he, he is giving to his companions. And if we were on our deathbed, we called our family around, those last words that we'd be speaking to our family would be, considered the most important words that we are ever going to speak. And so Jesus is speaking these words to his companions. He's giving them his final instructions uh, on what is going, you know, on what to do and how to live. And he also gives them a promise that he would be sending him another uh, comforter. Now, the companions of Jesus when did they live? They lived in the first century. They didn't live in the sixth. They lived in the first century. And so Jesus is, is making them this promise. The, holy, uh, the paraclete is identified as the, um, as the spirit of truth. And he's also identified as the Holy Spirit. When we look at John 14, 26, again, uh, when, what, does John, what does John say? He, he, he identifies the, uh, the paraclete, the comforter, the helper, whatever word, uh, you, English word you put in there, as the Holy Spirit. That verse alone should end the argument about whether it's another prophet because he's clearly identified as the Holy Spirit. It's also interesting to note that the... Um, that the world cannot see him. And so I would ask my Muslim friends, did the world see Muhammad? People living in the sixth century, were they able to, to see him? The, uh, whole, the paraclete or the comforter would dwell within the companions uh, of Jesus. And again, does Muhammad dwell within you? And again, I have to ask my Muslim friends in Shabir, how does Muhammad live in people who lived 600 years before he came? In John uh, chapter 14, 16, and 17, 
Jesus says, I will ask the Father, and you notice that Jesus uh, is asking the Father that he would send them another comforter, someone who is like, like him, and that he would be within him, that this person would help, would be a helper, would, uh, would counsel and comfort an advocate for, for for them. It's also interesting, the word in, in the Greek is uh, alon, uh, and not hetros, meaning he would be uh, very close to, um, y you know, he would like him. How much time do I have? How much time? Yeah, okay, thank you. He would be, and again, he, the uh, comforter would, with, would be with the disciples forever. You have, a, uh, again, this very personal relationship. And again, the immediate context is to whom is uh, Jesus speaking? He's speaking to, to the disciples. The disciples are with him in that present time. I don't think any of the com uh, disciples or companions of Jesus were alive uh, at the time of Muhammad. I think also if we look at John uh, 15 and verse 26, uh, we have this verse, and when the advocate comes, I will send him to you from the Father. So we see uh, it, Jesus saying he will send the advocate. And in my understanding of Islamic theology, it is God who sends prophets and not uh, and not Jesus and he will and also that the advocate proceeds or is proceeding or coming forth from the father now if you are w want to say that Muhammad is proceeding or coming forth from uh, uh, from the father then will be my guest on be my guest And again, uh, we see, uh, once again, that the uh, comforter is identified as the spirit of truth. Now, there are, like I say, there are two verbs in looking at uh, 1526. One is, I will send Jesus something he's going to do in the future. And this uh, pro proceeding from or going forth from is uh, a middle passive verb but it is translated basically in a, uh, an active way, a continuous, it's a continuous action. So the, um, the comforter, the advocate, again, whatever word you uh, uh, wish to use, is proceeding from, coming from the Father. Briefly, just looking at the ministry of the Holy Spirit, um, the Holy Spirit again uh, comes to comfort, uh, to succor, to uh, to bless, and to uh, he also comes to uh, convict the world uh, of righteousness and um, be, uh, convict the world of righteousness to expose the world uh, uh, exposes the world of sin. And just in closing, I want to say that, now I want to ask my Muslim friends here uh, this evening, uh, are, were the teachings of Muhammad and uh, Jesus the same or were they different? Again, if we allow, and just even if we focus in, on the Gospel of John and what, uh, and what Jesus said about himself and what John said about Jesus and compare it to the teachings uh, of Muhammad revealed to us in the Quran, what he said about Jesus, are these teachings the same? And I think if we're honest one with another, we'd have to say they are not. Okay, thank you.